Hello, this is Jerry Jenkins. Uh, I have another short video. I ran into this problem. I needed to create random events, but they weren't. The, each event didn't have a, a the same probability, so each event had a different probability. So how do you do that? And this is useful in uh, games or uh, simulations. So I had a, for example, if you have a game that's some kind of ocean game, and each day in the game you either face a pirate, a monster, a storm, or a calm day, and those are picked at random, uh, but the probabilities are all different. So how do you do this? Uh, so one way is you define a frequency distribution table where you, this will define the probabilities. And it looks like this. So on a calm day, so here's all my events I want to have in my game. And a calm day is going to be the most common, so it'll show up 20 times uh, relative to pirates, which might show up 5 times. So this might be the number of times over a, a long length of time, but basically it's relative frequencies. So if you wanted to make aliens more common, you could increase the, it from 1 to 2 and keep all the same other numbers. So a lot of times we call this the odds, so if you look at any 2, uh, like an alien versus a calm day is uh, odds of 1 to 20 or a pirate versus a sea mon monster is odds of 5 to 1. So let's see how we would implement this. So to implement it we're going to take the uh, frequency table and we want to implement software that actually just uh, returns an index number into our event. So the events could be strings or anything you want. Uh, but we're, we're going to have a, a list in Python that lists those. And so we'll have an index number which will look up the event. So we want to create a function that returns this uh, index number randomly so that if we look at a lot of them, they meet these frequency distribution. So to do this, we want to build an interval uh, where we lay out each event on the interval and the amount of space it takes on the interval is relative to its frequency. So basically we just store an interval that starts at zero and goes up to the sum of all uh, the numbers and the frequencies. And that will allow us to lay out the first segment will be uh, uh, 20, the next segment 3, so you can see that the size of the segments are exactly uh, these uh, frequency values. And then if you sum up all of these, the last, the end of the interval will be the sum of all these, which is B32. And the way it works is you pick a random uniform uh, value that lands somewhere on this interval. For example, if you pick 26.24, you want to see which segment it lands in. And to do that, you basically go through these cumulative frequencies and look for the first cumulative frequency which is greater than or equal to the random value that gets chosen. So if you choose a random value, you look and you say, well, this is not bigger than it. This is not bigger than 26.24. This is not bigger. This one is bigger. So the first one you find that's bigger than or equal to, you get that index number and you return it. And you can see, uh, and you can look through these slides, this is how it works. So if you pick something below 23, it's going to pick the first interval and return a 0. If you pick something uh, at 31.6, it's it's below the last one, but greater than 4, so it's going to return index 5, and so on. So how are we going to do this? Uh, we need this uh, cumulative frequency list, this one here, uh, for picking the numbers. So we're going to have an initialization part which builds that cumulative frequency list. Then we're going to have a function or a method on an object that returns the random index uh, for that frequency, original frequency list. So uh, we're going to step through the code now. We're going to do it three ways so we can show you different approaches to solving a problem. We're going to show you uh, two functional approaches um, which use what's called closure and we're going to show you an object-oriented approach. Uh, as a functional approach, we're going to refactor the original one and also show you one that uses generators and comprehensions to make the code a lot shorter or what we call terse in programmers. Notice our frequency tables in the code are going to allow you to do floats uh, so you can have non-integer frequencies. For example, if you have the original frequencies and you want to increase, you have this table and you want to increase aliens to happen a little more often, you can increase this 1 to 1.5 and it would just increase that and you would leave everything else alone. 
So let's look at the code next. Okay, so we've opened up the code. Um, this is Python using 3.6 because I'm going to use some features of 3.6. Uh, so first we import random because we're going to get a random distribution. And here's our first function. So this is a functional approach and the way you use this, the function is called event gen and you pass it the frequency table. So in the comment here, you would make up some name equal event gen and that name x would become a function that we can call. And when you do that, when you call x, it returns a sample index. And if you call this enough times, the sample index will have the probability uh, corresponding to the original frequency table. So as I said, there are two parts. We have to create uh, cumulative frequencies. So this is a fairly standard way of doing it with a loop. Uh, we get the total number of things in the frequency table. We set a new uh, list and make it empty. We have a total and we loop through the values in the frequency table and we build a cumulative sum and we keep storing those cumulative sums into the cumulative frequency table. Here we define the function. So in the function we want to return an index that's according to that. So we create our random value. Uniform creates a uniform random number between zero and total, which is a float. Um, we loop through the index table and we want the indices of that. So we look up the value in the cumulative index table and the first one that's greater than or equal to R, we return that index. And then uh, finally we return the name of that, we return that function. So that allows us to call that and get the function x. And then we can call function x and get the samples. Now we can simplify this a bit. So I've done that in the next part. So the first part, to do the cumulative frequency, we can do a list comprehension. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up a slice from the first element up to uh, the ith element of the frequency table. So that's going to keep accumulating the sum for i in the range of the length of the frequency table. And then for the uh, meth for the function that we're going to return, we look up r just as we did before, but here we're going to use a generator comprehension. So it's like a list comprehension, but it creates a generator. And so it says for i, for i, t, n, enumerate. So i, t, when you call enumerate, it creates pairs of the index and the value uh, from this uh, here. So it looks up the cumulative frequency and returns the index of it and the value in the table. And for the first, and if, well, we only want the ones where the uh, value in the table is greater than the random value or equal to it. So what next does is, since we're calling it on a generator, it returns the first item in the generator that meets this condition. So the first item in the generator. So this is a trick to get the first in an iteration. Uh, so here we have an iteration, and next will give us the first one. So next, normally, if you call it again, it gets the second one and so on. So this is a trick to get the first item that meets a condition in an iterator or a generator. And that's it. We return that function. And uh, here's the object-oriented approach. So this is pretty straightforward. We have a, a, a class. And notice how we use it we call event generator frequency table. So that's going to create an object x. Notice the syntax of this is just like this was a function returning a function. Because we're going to call that object with parentheses as if it was a function. We'll show you how to do that. So it turns out this is used exactly the same as these other approaches, which is nice because we're going to test all three approaches and we want to be able to call them the same way. Okay, so let's look at the constructor for this object. Uh, gets the length of the frequency table. It has one instance variable, which is going to become the cumulative frequency table. That's what we have to build initially. Uh, here's the standard loop for building that, but it's going to append and build this cumulative frequency table. And then we have, when we call it, when we call the object, it calls this. This is a special um, standard um, definition method for objects that you can now define it, so when you use the object in parentheses, it calls the object with whatever values are in the parentheses as parameters. We have no parameters, 
Uh, so it's just defined this way. So here we do the same thing as we did up before. We create the R and we use a, um, a generator comprehension to look up the first item that meets the condition. And to test it, we just put the, the uh, actual variables, which are the uh, names of the two functions and the name of the class. And then we have a, a, a label, which we're going to label our test. And so for the generator, which is going to be set to one of these, and the label in test, you can see how that works. It then has the frequency table and events it's going to use. Uh, it, it gets a, the uh, value we're going to call. So this is going to be either a function or an object. Calling the generator, which was set to one of these, passing in the frequency table. Uh, we're going to do a histogram, so we're going to do a histogram where the key is going to be the name of the event, and we're setting them all to zero initially. We're going to do a million samples, so we have a loop for that many samples. We look up the index by calling sample, so this is either calling a function or it's calling an object. And that all of them return an index, which we use to index into events to get the name of the event, which is now the key to the histogram and we're going to add one to that slot. So this is a way of doing histograms. Uh, we're going to use total later, so we get the total of all the frequencies. We're going to print the label, and then for each event in the keys of the histogram, uh, we're going to print out uh, the number, the name of the event, the value that was accumulated in the histogram, and then we're going to take the value in the histogram and doing a little math, recreate its frequency. So let's run it, and it'll run all three samples. It's doing a million for each example. And so here we go. We've recreated the frequencies here. Here you can see out of a million, there were this many calm days, and let's see, there were this many aliens. So you can see if you compare those, just divide those, you'll get a, about a 1 to 20, exactly a 1 to 20 ratio doing a million samples and then it runs it on the other two cases as well. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We wanted to show you two things. Uh, one was how do you uh, manually write code to do uh, random events with different probabilities. And the second part, since we're showing you that, to show you different ways of approaching developing that algorithm and writing it in Python. Uh, you can also write this in C and I'll have a uh, article on that as well later. Please subscribe to my channel. You'll see an icon in the lower right to do that and you'll receive notifications when I post new videos. Thank you.